everybody, it's Natalie from High Heel Diaries YouTube talk show and thank you so much for coming back to watch another one of my videos. These videos help to inspire women one story at a time. So if you find it interesting, please like it, please share it and please subscribe to my channel. So it's been a little while since I did number one of the um, High Heel Diaries self care series, part one of that. Um, that one was on loving your body, mind, but loving yourself, mind, body, and soul. Um, if you haven't seen it, you can click the link in the description below and um, watch that video. Today we're going to talk about your body and intimacy, falling back in love with yourself. And this is pretty much pertaining to women that are going through or have gone through breast cancer reconstruction, but it's not only for you. There's a lot of women that have lost, you know, um, uh, have not have fell, fell in love with their bodies. Um, they're not in love with themselves anymore um, for multiple reasons, whether it's physical, um, whether it's mental, um, whether it's via abuse or surgical. Um, there's a lot of reasons why you might have fallen out, out of love with your body. And in turn, and what I'm going to talk about mostly today, is how it has affected my intimacy with my, my husband. Um, a friend of mine had said when I posted a little video on Instagram just asking people to send me their questions, um, he was like, whoa, how brave of you to talk about things that nobody wants to talk about. And this is exactly why I do what I do. Because this situation is real. You, If your body's altered in any kind of way, and if it, if it affects you and your relationship, um, most people don't want to talk about it. But it's a real situation. And it's something to talk about. It's, it's something to discuss with the right people, right? Um, so that's what I'm doing today. I've been there, done that. I've, I've had my relationship be, be affected by it. I'm better for it now and I'm sharing my experience so that those who are going through it might learn something from my experience. So um, please, like I said, click the link below if you haven't seen part one because it talks more about um, loving your, your body, falling back in love with yourself, mind, body, and soul. So um, to do more with like the outer appearance of your body and how that can transcend to transcend into making you fall back in love with yourself and, and how you look so I give you my tips and tricks on my hair care a lot of people that know me or see my videos see my hair is always different right now it's a little bit lavender I don't know if you can see that um, it talks a lot about I talk a lot about um, how I do it so my my hair my my workout routine um, my skincare products all the different things that I use to to keep me looking, you know, keep me on on top of things. So um, I was affected by breast cancer, um, not once, not twice, but three times, and I've gone through a double mastectomy um, with reconstruction, and I've had uh, 22 surgeries to date. I'm done. Um, I'm complete with all that. But in the meantime, going through the processes of reconstruction. Um, losing your breast, having to build it back, you go through different phases. Um, and I didn't like what I saw. I didn't like my body. I didn't like the reflection that I saw in the mirror. Um, it was hard for me. And I'm not going to lie. I, I'm, you know, a lot of people look at me and say, you're so strong. You're so strong. You know, how did you do it? So it took me time to get there. Um, for those women that are like a year in or two years in or saying it's so hard and they're pushing themselves, don't push yourself. Give yourself the time. You have to get used to the physical changes. You have to go, go through the emotional changes. You have to deal with everybody else and how they're reacting to what you're going through. So losing my breasts um, took a lot out of me. Um, hated my body, hated what I saw. I pretty much hid myself in the closet or in the bathroom when I was changing, if I got out of the shower, I always had a towel or a robe on. Coming from the type of person that I, I was, um, which was a very liberal person, I walk around naked. My kids are forever saying, Mommy! <laughs> right? And I'm like, what? This is, you know, this is how we were born, for goodness sake. But that's the person that I was. And um, now I couldn't do that. I, I didn't want to do that anymore because I felt that my body was offensive. Um, and now 
coming into the conversation about uh, my husband, you know, he never once made me feel like I wasn't beautiful. He never once made me feel like, you know, he didn't, he loved me any less. But I thought to myself, well, how could, how could he love this? Then, you know, I, was, I wasn't able to work out as much anymore in between surgeries because I was having to heal. Um, so my body wasn't, you know, the way it was, it wasn't as tight anymore. And, um, I, I started to fall out of love. Like I said, I fell out of love with myself when I thought, how could he, how could he be in love with that body? Um, so that took a toll on our marriage. Um, I was more distant, um, with our intimacy. Um, intimacy had to happen in the dark. There was no more, you know, random or lights on or anything like that. It was, those things were happening in the dark. Otherwise it wasn't happening. And, um, I also went through a very painful phase, obviously, when, um, after surgery and reconstructing my breasts, um, when I was going through the reconstruction for a good period after the reconstruction, after the surgery, you know, you can't lie on your side. You can't lie on your front. You have to be very careful. You can be very physical. So yeah, it, it changed a lot. Um, like I said, I was very physical. We come from a very physical family, um, sorry, active family athletic family trying to find the right word here all of our kids are in in um, highly competitive sports rep sports academy sports um, my husband is a retired professional baseball player so um, it was almost incumbent upon me to keep my body fit um, and not because he ever demanded it but because I just felt that that was very necessary it's like I had to be a role model for my children and um, so we had to you know keep that up and I couldn't do that anymore so God, I just felt like everything was you know, going all to hell. <laughs> so um, it was really hard. And when I was talking to you about in the closet, changing in the closet, it brought back memories um, to when I was a teenager. As um, when I was born, I had an umbilical hernia and that deformed my stomach muscles. So I remember being in, in high school when we had to change for gym class and all the girls were there taking their clothes off and you know, like talking with their bras on and their panties. I was never doing that. I was in the bathroom changing my clothes because um, I, I didn't like how my body looked. So now going through what I was going through with the breast cancer and the reconstruction and not liking my body kind of like brought me right back to that stage of my life. And I was doing the hiding all over again. Um, but like I said, my, my husband, he never made me feel less loved so this wasn't because of him I didn't retreat I didn't change how I felt about myself and my body because of him I, I it was something that happened to me because of how I felt um, and it wasn't until I realized years later after going through a lot of the other um, emotional growth and emotional changes um, from reading and from talking and going through counseling and whatnot I realized that my body and its scars and its deformities is a roadmap. It's unique. It's one of a kind. It's beautiful the way it is. There's nobody else in the world with a body like mine. And I began to love that about my body. I began to love it so much to the point that um, I was using my body um, on social media to show my beauty that, hey, it doesn't matter what you go through. It doesn't matter what you physically look like. You are beautiful. And I want every woman that's looking at this video right now, and if they're going through what they're going through that's causing them to feel down about their bodies, just know that, okay? You're beautiful the way you are. And when I went through all the surgeries that I was going through in order to reconstruct my breasts, I didn't do them because I was on this pursuit of perfection to have perfect that's perky right. boobs. Because I never right. had perfect perky boobs before my children even. And, and no, I didn't expect that. First and foremost, we needed to make sure the cancer was gone, which we did. Secondly, um, I just wanted to get to the end result. Basically, there were so many bumps and bruises along the way and the cancer came back twice. 
um, and then I had to pretty much start reconstruction over again. Reconstruction happens in multiple surgeries. So everybody needs to know that. Everybody that's anticipating going through it, just know that. It's not gonna happen in one surgery, it's not gonna happen in two. There's gonna be steps and stages. You have to wait in between and heal. Then you have to do it. It depends on what you're doing, whether you're doing um, just a reconstruction, if you're doing uh, reconstruction, sorry, just a mastectomy and leaving your breast alone as it is, you're not rebuilding, or if you're taking your abdominal section and doing the DEP surgery and placing it on your breast to re rebuild, or if you're taking your latissimus dorsi muscle from your back and bring it around and rebuilding, which is what I did the second time around, third time around, um, you're gonna have a lot of surgeries to go through. In the meantime, learn, read, research, grow, cry, scream, Paint. do what you need to do in order to grow. But at the end of it all, anticipate and understand that it's going to come to an end. So anticipate at the end of it that you're going to be a better person, that you're going to have the body that you want or as best as you can get to after going through what you're going through and be happy with it. Um, <clears throat> so once, once I realized that my body was beautiful the way it was, the physical being that I liked in the mirror now started to transcend into my inner being. If you understand what I'm saying, I started to love myself again. I loved what I saw in the mirror and that started to change how I felt inside. And when that started to change, how I reciprocated that love I was feeling towards my husband was so much different than before. So I was like, love me now, love me. I want your love now, I want it back now. I wanna feel loved all over again. Um, and so, you know, things are, are, are much better. Yeah, I'm back to my, my crazy sex life. <laughs> Let me tell you, there's one thing about being together with someone for 30 years. You go through a ton of ups and downs. You have to. Okay, I've been with my husband since I was 16. I'm now going to be 47 in May. He is 50. If I haven't changed or grown since I was 16 or since I was 25 when we got married, let's be more realistic, from when I was 25, if I haven't changed, then there's something wrong with me. So you have to grow, you have to change. But one thing I will tell you that it's great to be consistent with is to have a, a healthy sex life, to have a healthy dose of intimacy in your life with your partner, to keep it real, to keep it exciting. Find different areas, buy sexy clothing, go on you know little weekend trips and go buck wild, I don't know. Just do things that you know, will keep your life exciting. And yeah, that's what we do. Oh, and speaking of sexy clothing, I'm gonna take you upstairs to my closet where I started to store all of my sexy clothing. When that part of my life died, I buried my clothes. I buried anything that had to do with that part of my life because I didn't want to show it anymore. So you're gonna come and take a trip with me upstairs to my room. <laughs> I'm gonna bring you into my private area to show you, okay? Come. All right. I'm gonna show you um, my sexy clothes um, cemetery. That's um. <laughs> where they went to. Just give me a second. Okay. This is where they went. In the bag. But let me show you what, you know, what Natalie used to do. Then I took a minute off. I'm going to show you really some intimate stuff here, some private stuff. But, you know, we're females. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know what this is, but... When it's on, it looks really good. <laughs> so yeah, I wasn't wearing this anymore. I wasn't wearing it anymore. 
Let's see. Like some really cute stuff. Right? Gotta have animal print. Animal print. Baby doll. Some really cute stuff, but yeah, I wasn't wasn't wearing it anymore. Wasn't wearing them anymore. And you know, <clears throat> things have changed since then too, right? Like, I I don't want these stuff anymore. I, I want different stuff, and you know that's part of the excitement of the special occasions like Valentine's Day and Christmas and birthdays and Mother Days, Mother's Days. Like, my husband has fun now buying me these things, right? This was from 20 years ago when we got married. 20 years ago, 21 years ago. So yeah, that's um, the graveyard. The graveyard. <laughs> We're gonna now get into the questions that you ladies have for me about how I fell back in love with me. All right, so let's get to it. So let's get into those questions that you know, you viewers have so graciously took the time to DM me um, and get you some answers as far as how I got myself um, back to where I am now at the place where I've fallen back in love with me and my partner. Um, this is from <clears throat> Instagram handle at watch the Z live. Okay. Breast cancer survivor, thank you so much for sending your message. I don't know your name. I'm not going to call your, your first name on the video, but thank you so much for sending your message um, or your statement. So you had breast cancer and you went through reconstruction in 2018, 2019, um, and still struggling to feel good about your body. Um, your left breast was removed via mastectomy, replaced with implants. Um, your right breast was lifted but dropped back down later. Um, you're still uh, noticeably uneven, noticeably uneven. So she basically you are still having trouble falling back into you, falling back into loving yourself and loving your body again. Let me just comment 2018, 2019 was literally just around the corner for you, hun. It's going to take you some time to get there. Um, my goodness, you're, you're still going through the, the whole physical part of getting used to your body being different. Um, I applaud you though for actually recognizing that you don't feel good about your body. Um, sometimes women just go through the motions of the breast cancer, the treatment, the reconstruction, and they're like, oh, it's just another process, it's another process, another process. I'll be fine, I'll be fine, I'll do the reconstruction, I'm going to be good again. Um, <clears throat> and they just have this unrealistic expectation of after reconstruction, I'm going to be good all over again. Um, you're still early in the game when you realize that you are not good, you had the surgery, you realize you're not good, and you're struggling. Give yourself that. It's normal. It's an early phase. It's an early stage. You're going to feel like this for a little while, unfortunately. Um, the healing process is a lengthy process. Some people go through it quicker than others before they get to that end stage of, um, they call it philanthropy, where you, you know, you're well with it and all you want to do is give back and help and support other people. Um, but you got to go through all the ups and downs before you get there. So ride with it, seek out assistance, um, whether it's a counselor, somebody else that's been through it. Um, I'm always here for you if you want to talk to me, just reach out to me via email or, or DM me. Again, we can chat more. Um, but you're going to go through some phases that you're just not going to understand. And just know that if you keep pushing, and understanding what you're going through, you'll get to the end sooner than later. Um, there's an article that I'd like you to read um, by an author called Gail Goodwin, 
and she talks about the 10 stages of healing and she explains them out so that you understand what you're actually you know why you're actually feeling the way you're feeling um and what it is you're feeling and how you understand it in relation to your life and what you're going through in your life and it wasn't until i read them myself did i realize that during like the first eight years i was going through some crazy things i mean i took off and went to mexico for a week by myself i you know <laughs> I didn't want to talk to anybody. I was like locked up in my room in the dark. Um, and I couldn't understand what different phases I was going through until I read it and I understood. So, I mean, it's not really a question, I guess, but if you're just, you know, commenting that, you know, you feel like it's like two years and you're still not back in love with your body, it's gonna take a time. It's gonna take time, but the way you can better help yourself is to understand what you're going through and understand that it doesn't happen like that okay i hope that's helped give you some insight um nah just meg <laughs> instagram n-a-h just meg so cool name um got a few questions or um comments but I'm gonna, I might not go through all of them, only in the interest of time. Um, I'll talk about what's kind of in relation to what we're talking about today in this, in this video. Um, with regards to, I'm, I'm gonna try to pinpoint what you're asking me to what we're talking about today. Let's put it that way. So your first question was, did it matter how other people around you thought? Um, to be honest with you, a lot of people didn't know what I was dealing with um, in this physical um, intimacy part of my not being in love with myself or in, in love with my husband anymore. Um, I didn't really talk about it, so a lot of people didn't really know about it. If you want to talk about the only other person being my husband, if it mattered how he thought, um, it really didn't for me um, during the phases that I was going through with regards to you know not, love, not loving my body anymore and falling out of love with me and my you know my soul was just not the same anymore it didn't really matter what anybody thought he could shower me with gifts he could tell me 50 million times that he loved me over and over again it didn't matter I, I needed it to know it for myself I needed to feel it I needed to feel it for myself uh, another question from now just Meg, um, did other people take away from your positivity rather than add to it? Um, in relation to this, um, not really gonna comment on that one right now because I don't really think it has much to do with the intimacy part or falling back in love with me. The one thing I will say about that is that I learned to block people out. If someone wasn't bringing positivity to my life, if someone wasn't helping me to heal emotionally, um, then, or if they were harming me more than helping me, then I was kind of putting them on the back burner. And I needed to be selfish that way because at that point I was the one that was important, nobody else. And I needed to make that very, very clear. Um, do the difficult, did the difficulties I faced um, come to mind randomly or do I focus on them more intentionally? So I think kind of what you're asking me is do the difficulties that I went through back then, do they come to my mind still um, just like out of the blue or do I dwell on them? Um, I, don't, I don't dwell on them. Um, what I do make sure I I do is every once in a while I'll recap if you know what I mean I'll remember what I went through because it kind of stops me from going back there again because I remember the pain of it I remember the agony that I felt I remember the pain that I put my husband through then I try to make sure I don't go back there so I think it's more an intentional thing that when I do remember I, I remember for the sole purpose of not repeating the same mistakes, okay? 
Um, what was my higher power and where did I find strength? Well, no doubt God. Um, I found God more and more in my life during um, this, this phase, that phase of my life. And he is ever so present now and still. Um, I always had a good relationship, um, uh, a good faith-based relationship. We grew up Catholic. Um, but, you know, as you carry on in life, you know, you get busy and yes, he's important and you always say your prayers, but I really, really, really hunkered down and, um, found a better relationship with God. Um, I, I really realized that all the different scenarios, all the things that were put in front of me were like so obvious that God was working. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like it was so obvious that he was working, that he was doing something in my life. Like little things, people that he put in my life, people that he took out of my life, um, messages that I received, um, daily scriptures that I would read. Like they were so poignant that it, if God wasn't right in front of me talking to me, saying, hey Natalie, this is what I want you to see or do or hear right now, like nobody could tell me that he wasn't doing that because it was so much like he was doing that. So definitely God. Um, do I believe the positive relationship I now have with my partner will be long term? Well, it's definitely better. Um, do I ever say never? Never. I never say never. Uh, we are human beings. Um, we are flawed and we are meant to make mistakes. What we are meant to do though from our mistakes is to learn from them. Um, have I learned from some of the mistakes I made or some of what I went through because a lot of the mistakes I made uh, weren't wholly intentional or wholly, I'd say, my fault. They were just, um, I guess, ramifications of what I was dealing with. Um, but do I ever say that I know what's going to happen next year or the year after that or the year after that? No, I don't. Um, is my relationship better? Yes, maybe way better. Is um, our intimacy way better? Oh yes, way better. <laughs> so um, I have to say that we've learned a lot. He's learned a lot about how to better support me. I learned a lot about how to appreciate and understand how he grieved and how he um, knew to support me or didn't know to support me. It took me a lot to understand that. I just, I feel like he's um, more understanding of when I might um, lose control or lose my temper a little bit more um, easily. Um, he's more understanding of it now um, as far as why I did. Um, he's more understanding now than he was at that time. Um, so yeah, I, I've been married 21 years. We've been together 30 years and there's no one else that I would want to choose over him. All right, another question for you, Meg. Got lots of questions, girl. Um, did you feel like you were the only one that could pick yourself up? Like, would friends and family help you? Um, I had a lot of friends and family that helped me. Um, at the end of the day, sometimes it didn't really matter what people said because I was so set in my ways. I was the one that was feeling this. I was the one that was going through breast cancer. I was the one that, you know, was, was losing, you know, my, my relationship with my husband because of what I was dealing with. You know, I was the one, not you. How can you understand? That's how I thought, right? Um, but at the end of it all, when I realized that people, again, through counseling, that people support and help you differently, than you possibly would if you were in their position. Um, the secondary caregivers, they um, are going through it too. So don't ever under underestimate what they are dealing with and how they are feeling. 
you know, they might not physically be going through cancer um, and the treatment and the reconstruction and the surgeries and all that. They might not be the ones that have to go to bed at night and wonder, you know, if, you know, in your body this cancer is festering again and it's going to come back. You know, if you go through one of your surgeries, if or not, you're going to come out of it alive. You know, they're not the ones that's going through it. No. Do they still feel for you? Do they still love you? Do they still want the best for you? Yeah. So if they say things to you like, oh, don't do another surgery, oh, you're good just the way they are, kind of take it with a grain of salt and don't mean that they're like, oh, you're, you know, you're, you're being physically motivated by the final outcome of how your breasts look. Um, that's why you're going through surgery. You will know those who are truly there for you. You will really know those who show up, not only by word, but by physical action those who are there for you, even if it's just that quiet support to sit with you and rub your hand and, and hug you and kiss you and say you're going to be okay. I can count my friends on my, my hand, my one hand, and some of my family members on my hand that were that support. Others that I thought were my friends, I learned to, I learned to, I don't know, not say they weren't my friends, but to put them on a different level of friendship, if you will. Okay? Um, you really, really, you really, really figure it out during this time who's really there for you. Um, did I have a hard time wanting it for myself? Did I have a hard time wanting to feel better, be better, look better? No. You know why? Um, I was always this woman who I, I loved to look good. I loved, I always took care of myself. I'm, I always say I'm, I'm, you know, the spitting image of my mom um, in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, we do a lot of things the same. We take care of our home the same, our children the same. We are heated and passionate the same. Um, we really kind of look very similar um, and I kind of took that from her, so I was always a very strong woman um, and very, very opinionated, <laughs> sometimes too much so, um, but I, I always knew that I needed to get over this hump in my life, this hurdle in my life. I knew I couldn't be like this forever. Um, I knew that I would get over it. I really did because I knew I had to. I couldn't be this person, this person that I'm seeing, this person who I called weak you know, not for any, not by any fault of my own, but I, I was weak and I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. So I knew I needed to get out of this. I knew I needed to heal. I knew I needed to get out of this part of my life where I didn't have a relationship with my husband, for goodness sake. You know, you know, I feel like I'm a young, sexy black woman and he's a sexy black man. And <laughs> I'm like, I got these two sexy you know, people here and no intimacy? What? No, we need to fix this right quick. And yeah, we, we, we fixed it. We fixed it right quick. Uh, well, not right quick, but eventually. And we're better for it now. Definitely better for it now. Um, so thanks, Meg. Uh, maybe that's not your name, but not just Meg. Thank you so much for those insightful questions. Going to move on. Sussex at Sussex 73. I like your name, girl. Hey, girl. Hey, Montreal. How you doing? <laughs> um, so she asked, my girl asked, what steps did I take to help myself fall back in love with me? May have got some of those answers from what I was um, responding to with Meg. Um, but like I said, I definitely, I knew I had to go to counseling because I knew I needed to get a handle on why I was feeling this way. Why am I driving this truck with my three kids in it and feeling like to turn the wheel into, you know, the transport or over the bridge? This is not good. This is not a good feeling. You know, and that was in the early stages of my breast cancer. And it was actually, I was dealing with postpartum as well because my son was only, um, he was born September 11th. This would have been like the first top of uh, September 11th, 2007. So it would have been the first top, the top of um, 2008. I knew I, at that point I needed to get help. 
Um, that was when I went to the doctor and I was like, Doc, you, you need to help me. Sorry, you, something's going on and I don't like it. And I'm worried for my family, I'm worried for myself, I'm worried for my family. Um, so I sought help and that's the first um, stage of knowing that you will come out on the, 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 the better side is to first acknowledge that you have an issue, um, acknowledge that you have a problem and that you wanna get help. Find the help you need, learn how to um, replace some of the bad things you're going through with some, some of the good things in life um, and then keep that pattern going and keep it going, keep repeating them until you get to this better place in life. And um, I read, like I said, I, I read a lot as to you know how to understand what I'm going through um, so I can better kind of compartmentalize um, the stages of, of depression, um, anger, the stages of pain, um, the moving on, the um, all the different phases, the 10 stages of uh, healing. Um, I needed to understand them so I knew if I or not have gone through them, already, through them already and if or not they're still to come I need to prepare myself um, and talking definitely talking and this is when I started High Heel Diaries um, in 2016 and let me tell you when I was in bed one night and I thought to myself like I gotta do something with with all my knowledge that I received through my own ailments. Um, so again, in 2008, I was first diagnosed, went through 10 surgeries. My last surgery in 2016, it came back um, and I had a surgery to remove the cancer. Um, and later, two months later in 2016, they found further cancer. And I had two more surgeries, three more surgeries to end up re removing that reconstructed breast, surgery number 16. Waited um, a good year and a half before I decided to reconstruct and then between 2016 and um, 20 end of 2019 I finished my my final reconstructive surgery which is taking the latissimus dorsi muscle and bring it around to the front um, so during that time uh, I read a lot and as I was saying back in 2016 after doing a lot of reading and really realizing the stages that I was going through um, and realizing that, hey, a lot of women are going through this and don't even realize what they're dealing with. I learned so much about the different types of cancer, the different um, signs. Um, oh, God, so much that I just knew I had to share it. And funny enough, after reading the last phase of, about the last phase of um, healing in Dr. Gail Goodwin's um, paper. Um, the last phase was philanthropy and philanthropy is where you just have this desire to want to give back to support whether it's financially or emotionally or physically what what have you and I was there in 2016 at the end of 2016 even though I had went through four surgeries in, in a matter of two months I was there I was like okay all right God I hear what you're saying. I know what you're telling me right now. You did not keep me safe. You did not um, catch this cancer three times and he and heal me, put me on the path of healing in order for me to sit here and lament and cry about it. It's what am I going to do with it now? Um, so yeah, talking. I know I'm running on sex, but um, talking it out with other people and everybody feeding off of one another is definitely what's helped me. And more women need to do that with each other. There's too many of us that kind of talk about each other in bad ways, that pull each other down like, you know, crabs in the bucket. We got to support each other, ladies. We got to do better, right? There, there's room out there for everybody to be successful and healthy individuals, right? So we got to do better with that. Um, oh, and more importantly, I learned to say no. I learned to say no to people. I learned to put people on the side burner, if you will, so that 
they can stop taking from me. I needed to say, no, you are not helpful to my healing. You are not helpful in my life right now. You are more hurting me. You're hurting me more than you're helping me. You have to stay over here. No, I won't succumb to that. No, I won't allow you to hurt me. No, I won't allow you to, to take away my power. I had to grow, grab that power back to strengthen myself because I knew I had something to give, All right? So at Instagram, Instagram handle at Natasha K1977, um, this is more of a statement. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about what you had to say. So you had a mastectomy and it took you four months to heal. So you're afraid to reconstruct. That's really understandable. And I tell you right now, you're not the only woman that goes through that. Um, you're, you're when you're into your journey and you're already tired. Um, you have more day, mad days than good. You have a lot of friends and family that have gone through um, breast cancer and you do a lot of, you know, asking questions and talking with them. You try to self-care, but sometimes it just, you just don't feel in love with, with you. Um, but you hope that you will someday. You feel your scars are a roadmap. Sometimes you feel like your scars are a roadmap of your life, but other days you feel estranged from your um, womanhood. All valid, valid points. I went through it all and a lot of women are going through exactly what you're going through. So it's normal. One year in, I'm going to say to you what I said to the person that um, I mentioned in the first question. Um, she had her surgeries in 2018, 2019. Still early, hun. It really is early. One year, you're just getting used to the physical aspect of it. Um, and the emotional aspect of it, of it is so overwhelming that you can't get a handle on both at one time. So give yourself some time. Um, and with regards to having had a mastectomy and taking four months to heal, that is a major, major surgery. And if I remember correctly, my doctor didn't do any further surgeries until almost six months after my mastectomies. So you have to really heal. You have to take time and heal. And I know for some women, it could be, some women could be harder than others. I think what the problem is, especially for women, is that we're such go-getters um, with our, our life, with taking care of family, children, and husbands, and work, and, and other people, that we don't really give ourselves the time that we need to fully heal. And we think, we, we think okay, we're not feeling pain anymore, or we got some pain medication, you know, in our system, so we're good to go after a couple of weeks. You need time. And you don't realize um, how much surgery takes a toll on your body. Like it really takes a toll on your body. Your blood levels, your sugar levels are down, your energy, everything is down. It takes you a minute to get back into feeling active again, where you can get back into the gym and all that. Like you're just not you. Like. Surgery, surgery is a major, major deal. And I think it took me quite a bit of surgeries before I really realized how major it was. And now it made me understand more when my loved ones would say, God, Natalie, I wish you wouldn't do any more surgeries. You're good the way you are. I can understand their point of view that anything can go wrong during surgery. We get it. Anything can go wrong during surgery. And you're putting your, your body under so much stress. Um, but they also are in comparison to a lot of other surgeries, pretty routine mastectomies. Um, and the reconstruction that you have to do afterwards in order to get to the complete stage of reconstruction, um, it takes time to get there. It could be a few surgeries to get there, but make no mistake, you will get there. And if you set out to do surgery, um, to reconstruct your breasts, just know that you're setting out to have that end result. And at the end of it all, you're going to have some semblance of your female anatomy of your breast back again. And nothing's wrong with that. Absolutely nothing's wrong with that. Nothing's wrong with wanting to have what God gave you. That physical being of the physical aspect of being a woman. There's nothing wrong with that. You should never feel bad and no one should ever make you feel bad for wanting to have your breast back. Like, 
those women who opt to do reconstructive surgery um, just so that they can augment and enhance their breasts or their their booty or you know take away fat out of their tummy or what have you that's their choice and they choose to do it and they pay money good money for that we didn't ask to have breast cancer we didn't ask to have our breasts removed so why should we feel bad about reconstructing so i know you're talking about the pain and you're afraid of reconstruction because it took you four months to heal that's the first part and that's the most major part it shouldn't take you that long to heal with all your other surgeries. Just do your good research. Make sure you have a really good doctor and you will be good. Um, you're going to have, like you said, more bad days than good. Normal. Um, soon it's going to start flipping. You're going to have more good days than bad. So just ride it out, okay? Um, reach out to me, please, anytime if you have any other further questions um, with regards to how to cope with the, the stages of healing. Um, and your scars, my dear, are a roadmap. It talks about your story, nobody else's story, your story. So it's your roadmap, your journey that was set out just for you. If you think about it like this, you have this trip you want to take and you want to get to that final destination by any mean necessary, right? Come hell or high water, you're getting there. Think of your journey with your reconstruction or your breast cancer journey like that. You're gonna go up hills, you're gonna go through rain, maybe some snow, I don't know, some crazy weather. You will get there. Ride with the waves, roll with the punches, you will get there. Learn along the way, file what you learned away, because at the end of the day, when you get to that final destination, you want to share your journey with others. You want to share with others, I don't know, grandma, grandpa, whoever's at the final destination, you want to share with them what you went through when you got, when you, once you, when you were on the way, okay? So don't take away what you're learning. Don't take away the hardships that you're having. They're hard, I know, because you don't, they're new to you, but you will get there, all right? So I'm gonna call it, <laughs> Uh, I'm going to wrap it up right now. Um, anybody else that has any further questions for me on this subject, please reach out. I know um, it was, you know, pretty private, um, but that's okay. Um, you know what? I'm, I'm an open book right now because at the end of the day, if I'm helping somebody else out and preparing them for what's to come, then I'm happy to, to be open about my life. And I know one thing is that I'm not the only one that's feeling this way. I'm not the only one that has gone through what I've gone through. But I am one of the ones that's talking about it. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we are all human. We all have these emotions. We all have these feelings. And it's incumbent upon us to, to share what we learn with others so that there's less pain in the world. And I really believe that, you know, what you know and what you learn is meant to be shared with others. You know, you're going to have a friend or relative that might have gone through or might be going through or might end up going through um, breast cancer or, or any other um, diagnosis that they might learn from what you've gone through. And that's what I'm doing right now. So High Hill Diaries is all about women inspiring women one story at a time. This is my story and I thank you for listening to it. Please share this information. Send me other, other, any other questions. Please like, subscribe and share this information, share this video. Also, um, please have a boo over at my Instagram, my social media handles, my Instagram, my Facebook. Um, there's a lot of information on my website, highhilldiaries.com. And my Instagram handles are all at High Heel Diaries, H-E-A-L. Don't forget H-E-A-L for healing. Okay, thank you so much, beautiful people, for listening. Take care.